Welcome back to the program. They said it was impossible. Now there's an entry in the Guinness Book of Records showing it is not. Six adventurers have become the first people to row across the treacherous Drake Passage and reach Antarctica. It is an astonishing achievement. 1,200 kilometres, 40-foot waves, storms, icebergs in the roughest ocean on this planet. It was all filmed for a documentary. Just have a look at this. The most dangerous ocean crossing in the world is from South America to Antarctica. All right, boys. A battle to survive Arctic cold temperatures, little storms, high winds, and 40-foot swells. Well, I'm delighted to say let's talk to Jamie Douglas Hamilton, one of them. He spoke to us before he set off. He's back with us all in one uh, piece. Uh, I mean, when we talked before, I remember saying to you, you were absolutely bonkers for, for even considering this. How many times did you think of that when you were right there in the middle of all of this? Well, but being naive is a very good thing <laughs> because once, once you commit to something and you're right there, there's no turning back. You just have to carry on with it. Uh, and the brain can't really remember pain. A few years ago, I rode from Australia to Africa with, with a team of six. And once you're actually out there again, suddenly all the pain and discomfort that you, were, you had during that time comes back to you. And you think, you know, there's a reason why I was so keen to get off that boat last time. <laughs> we put the pictures up already. Just describe for me, because, I mean, the swell, the waves, already we're seeing that uh, the boat just disappears at, at times. What was it like? How tough? Yeah, well, the waves got a lot bigger than that. Uh, that was, I mean, the, the, right what you're looking at there is probably 20 foot. At times, you go up to double that. And uh, so you completely disappear. And uh, sometimes, if you're side on, you would semi capsize in the waves and get completely splashed. Uh, so it's a very, very humbling experience being that small in this huge ocean that's so violent, so powerful. And the problem is, it's a Drake Passage. So you've got the Pacific, Atlantic, Southern Ocean meeting for its very narrow choke point. And all this bad weather just comes and was... And within that, what's what the worst bit of it? Is it the cold? Is it the winds? Is it the currents? What, what is the worst bit? Well, one is the currents, because that is taking you from west to east, but it's the cold. The cold has an element of making you want to give up. It gives you an element of psychologically, when you haven't had much sleep, and when you hear that pattern, the, the, the hatch saying, Jamie, 10 minutes, you want to just curl, curl up and bowl and just go to sleep, but you can't. You just have to keep on going. And tell me, how, how much rowing were you doing? How much were you able to do it in one go? So it's 90 minute shifts. Normally it's two hour shifts in ocean rowing, but we put it up to 90 minutes, so you put more into your shift. So it's about 24 to 26 strokes per minute. It's pretty fast, very intense rowing, because we're not in a trade winds route. The wind isn't behind us, it's against us. Sometimes we're rowing into the wind, other times we're rowing at side waves. And how often then is the wind changing and therefore what you have to do and where it you changed. row changes? It changed it is so frequently. We were hit by four storms. Uh, at the same time, you get periods of, of high pressure where it's like a lake. And you're there and you think, you would think you're in the tropics and you get the sun coming out and you think, you almost forget you're in a Drake Passage. By the evening, you're back in a storm again. In some of the footage, it shows all of you, I think all of you, undercover, were there moments where it just was too stormy, too rough to, to, for any of you to row? You talked about semi-capsizing. Did, did you ever actually capsize? We had to go to Sianca. Sianca is a process where you have to put a, um, a parachute out the back of a boat, because obviously the water's two and a half thousand kilometers, uh, uh, sorry, two and a half thousand meters deep. So you put a parachute out the back. The problem was not all of us could fit into the hatch. So we had three people in one hatch, and that one person had always had to be outside. I was actually outside in that changeover, going outside, when a wave hit me from the side, and I almost went over. And it was pretty scary because and you before I put my harness be able on, to, what you'd last a couple of minutes if you went into that water. Yeah, two to five minutes, uh, not much longer. Now we talked before, and I remember asking the absolutely obvious question. Anybody who didn't see that, and if you ask it again, wh wh why would you do this? It was. It was. Everyone told us we were mad uh, and there's been a number of things through life where people said it's impossible, it's crazy. And once you've done something that people said is impossible, you realise you set your boundaries higher. And we just thought this was always considered notion rowing as the hardest thing, you know, almost a death wish to even try it. But we knew the right training. 
these sorts of adventures, it's in the family blood, isn't it? Your, 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 your right, grandfather, tell that story. Well, gra granddad was the first man to fly over Mount Everest, and he was, he was told it was a death wish to fly over Mount Everest. Uh, those op open cockpit biplanes couldn't even go that high, and they actually took it to put an extra big propeller on, put a lot of training in, and actually managed to clear the summit of Mount Everest. I shouldn't have put only just by 20 feet. Wow. And, but that, the, the footage from that is what Sir Edmund Hillary based it's a new route to actually summit Mount Everest. Uh, that's uh, 20, 20 years Just later. a final thought about the, the, the rowing, because uh, I mean, because of what you described, just how arduous that is. You're in one of the most beautiful parts of the globe. Did you ever get a chance to see? I mean, you're there with the, the icebergs, the ice, all this wildlife. Did you manage to take all of that in? Absolutely. Once you get over the Drake Passage, you get into the most pristine and beautiful landscape I've ever seen. Mountains that just come out of the sea, like Himalayan peaks. Uh, you get icebergs that look like the size of towns. The scale of Antarctica is completely unlike anything else. We were followed by penguins uh, ever since we got into that continental shelf. And for the last 150 miles, we had thousands of penguins, whales, orcas following us. And it was, that, was, that was the highlights. The Drake was the, yeah, the hell, the, the Antarctica and was the heaven. Was <laughs> so thank you so much for talking to me. Uh, we're going to take a short break. When we're back, we'll have the latest on that Iran story. Uh, Russia just warning that activation of the dispute mechanism may make returning to implementing the nuclear deal impossible. More on that in a member or two. Don't go away.